that he is here with us. Before I pass it over to both of them, we also want to make a very special announcement. This morning, we had Vaishika Prabhu initiate some of our devotees from our community. Just going to name Bhaktan Jessica, who is now Jayanti Dasi, who is here. We have Rajesh Prabhu, who is now Ram Vilas Prabhu. And Bhakta Roman, who is Radhika Rasika Prabhu. We've had so many d disciples inspired by Prabhu, uh, by Shika Prabhu, and today these three wonderful souls accepted their spiritual master formally. We want to convey our prayers to them. And now we would like to officially welcome once again Vaishika Prabhu and Madhav Nirakula. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Good evening, everyone. Would you like to start with a little chanting? Okay. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Where's the cowbell? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Everyone, please. Hare 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sounds good, sounds good. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. More, more. Hare 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Go Premanandi Hari Bo. I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual master who saved me from the darkness of ignorance and to all of you. You're all great souls and I feel very honored to be in your presence tonight. We were talking yesterday about ignorance, that is, a few of us who had gone out into Toronto to present Bhagavad Gita in various parts of the city People are actually very interested in Bhagavad Gita, and we're finding an even greater interest in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a larger book. The Bhagavad Gita is 700 verses, and the Srimad Bhagavatam, depending on how you divide them up, is 18,000. And the Srimad Bhagavatam was written under circumstances that all of us can relate to. The king, Parikshit, had seven days to live. How many days do we have to live? No, we have seven also. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be one of those days. It's Saturday mornings, Tuesday, whatever it is. We're all in the same boat. Have you ever heard that before? It helps to know. We can commiserate with one another because we go through all the same kinds of sufferings. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the topmost yogi, is one who can show compassion to others. He says, Atmao pam yena sarvatra samam pashiti yorjana sukham vayari vadu kams yogi paramo mata. Parama, as you know, means the highest. Mataha, Krishna says, this is my opinion. My opinion is that the parama yogi is one Atmao pam yena sarvatra, that he or she has compassion for all others, empathy. Pathy means to feel, and M means what's inside. We know what's inside us, and we can understand that everyone's going through the same kind of struggles. When they become attached to getting more in life and they don't want to lose it, it's a conundrum because we work hard to get more, and as soon as we get it, then we're in anxiety because we don't want to lose it. Does that sound familiar? And then we lose something, we feel separation from it. So the Bhagavad Gita, or Krishna, who speaks the Bhagavad Gita, comes to tell us that real happiness comes from within our own self and our connection with the Supreme. When Arjuna asked Krishna, what's the symptom of a self-realized person? Krishna says, a self-realized person is one who's fixed in consciousness. He's called a stita pragya. And he says, one who can withdraw the senses from their objects, and he describes the mind as a factory. It's always producing more and more desires, like a conveyor belt where options of various colors, sizes are coming to us. And at the same time, the person can find satisfaction in the self. That person, he says, is fixed in consciousness feel satisfied where, wherever he or she is. It doesn't matter in the environment or how much wealth one has. After all, we all know wealth 
is a never-ending struggle, isn't it? If somebody gives you a million dollars, Canadian. And even that, it made you disappointed, right? Like, couldn't it have been something else? So then you get a million and you think, the guy's a billionaire, he could have given me a little more. It's not, not so much, a million dollars. We're never satisfied on the material level because we're spiritual and we can't relate to material possessions. Although Krishna also isn't impractical. He never tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita to walk away from the world because, as we know, that's what Arjuna wanted to do. That was his solution and that's what a lot of people think when we, they get frustrated in the world. They think, let me just give everything up. Well, Krishna tells Arjuna that nahikashit shanamapi jatu karmakrit karyate yavasha karma sarva prakritir jaragunai. He says, if you give this up, you'll go do something else and you're going to come back to what you're used to anyway. It's your nature, Arjuna. You can't stop it. But then he gives the solution in the fifth chapter of, of the Bhagavad Gita of how to be happy in this world and not become entangled, to have enlightened engagement with the world. He says, live like a lotus. Doesn't that sound like a, a good tattoo? People ask you, what do you mean live like a lotus? Krishna says, Brahman yadaya karamani sangam tyakva karotiya lipyate na sapapena padma patram ivambasa. So the lotus is called padmaja. It grows out of the mud, padma. Ja means to be born. And it grows to the top of the pond. And all of you who know lotuses, if you've ever visited one before in a pond, it's uncanny how the water, although it may splash onto the lotus, it can never stay. It rolls right off. And Krishna says, Brahman yadaya karmani sangam tyakva karotiya. If you change your motive in life, then you change everything. Because if my motive is to control everything in my life, I'll be very disappointed. But if I give up that idea of control and say it's already been controlled, things may seem out of my control, but it doesn't mean they're out of control. The world's always going on perfectly the way it should. Krishna is described in the Sri Upanishad, Om Purnam Madah Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate. The personality of God is perfect and complete, and all emanations that come from the complete whole remain complete in themselves. There's a complete arrangement within nature for everything to go on. For instance, if you get a tiny cut, you can watch and marvel at how it just heals. It just comes together again. Did you do that? No, you just watched it. How did that happen? The whole world's like that. It's going on in spite of us. So Krishna says, find your place in the universe. You do have a place where you're always engaged, you're always joyful, and you never become entangled with the material world, and you can live like a lotus. Like what? Live like a lotus. Let's say it all together. And when you go home tonight and somebody who didn't come, they had to watch a cricket match or something, and, and you say, what did, what did that guy say? And you'll say. And then you walk into your room, close the door. <laughs> and I'll think, hey, what is, what is it about? It's about changing our motive inside. When we have the motive to do service, Krishna says, this is the highest path. There's a path of material enjoyment, and anyone in their right mind knows that that doesn't work. There are millions of songs about it, about how things didn't work out. Do they have those in Bollywood? Or is everything cheery? Like, we have in America, we have country music, and people talk about, oh, I lost my hound dog, and my tr truck got stolen, and people sing the blues. There's poetry that goes back, classic, classical poetry and history where people talk about love lost, fortunes lost, Ozymandias, famous poem about a great king who controlled everyone and now all that's left in the desert is the visage of his destroyed statue worn away by the blasting sand over eons. And it's the 
mighty time that takes away everything from us. So materialism doesn't make sense. And then on the other side, if I say, I renounce the world, that's impractical, isn't it? If you go into the Bank of Canada and you say, I renounce this whole bank and all the money in it, <laughs> that makes as much sense as saying, I renounce the world, because it's not ours to renounce. So there's a middle path that Krishna teaches in the Bhagavad Gita, and that is, take the path of service. Service is called what in Sanskrit? Seva. So we have a saying, your seva will save you. Because there's no way to interact with the world that we don't become frustrated unless we act according to our true nature. And our true nature is that we're aligned in service to the Supreme. That's what yoga means. That's what karma yoga means. When you put yoga on the end of anything like jnana yoga, uh, mantra yoga, it means it's connecting to our original conscious source. So that brings me to the Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam takes up where the Bhagavad Gita leaves off. At the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, declare bankruptcy. Do you know what you do when you've got too much debt? I hope nobody knows what you're supposed to do because it means you've, it's happened to you. But there's a bankruptcy offering in, a, in America. If you get too much debt, you have a company, you go to the court and you say, please give me bankruptcy protection so I can reorganize. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, you'll never catch up in the material world. Too much karmic debt. So you come to me, just take shelter of me, I'll take care of it. So the Srimad Bhagavatam starts off by saying, here are the details, here's how to live that life. And within the Bhagavatam, there are nested stories. And I began the class by telling the major theme of the story, which is a king, Parikshit, who was cursed to die within seven days. He went back to his kingdom and he walked out the door, sat down on the bank of the Ganges without his royal dress, and he began to inquire, what is my duty now that I have seven days to live? Now that's relevant to all of us because I may have 70 years, but practically it's the same. It all comes in due course of time. So we have to answer this question, and the Srimad Bhagavatam does. So Stephen Covey, did anybody read his book called The Seven Habits? Three people? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One of the important concepts that he brings up in this book, this is very practical, isn't it? He says, start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. Figure out where you're trying to go and then work for that. And the Srimad Bhagavatam begins by Parikshit Maharaj asking his teacher, and there were many teachers there, but everyone stood back and gave deference to Shukadeva Goswami. And they offered him a seat of esteem. He was a 16-year-old boy, but he was fully enlightened from the teachings of his father, Srila Vyasadeva. And the king said, what is my duty now that I have seven days to live? And Shukadeva answered in a very practical way. He said, whatever you do, whatever your occupation is, whatever part of the world you come from, it's all the same. Your duty is to remember Narayan at the time of death. In other words, remember God at the time of death. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that whatever we remember when we leave this body, that state we will attain without fail. The consciousness that we develop in this life is forcing us for an accommodation by material nature in the next life. So the Srimad Bhagavatam gives us this goal to work towards. What is the end of my life? And I've, I've read recently people, even in secular life, when they think about the fact that life is temporary and there is a beginning and end, at least this life in this body is temporary. And they keep that in mind as a priority that, remember, I'm only here for 
a few days. In geological time, it's that fast. When I have that perspective, then my life takes much deeper meaning. And the stress of life, the gains, the losses, reversals of fortune, everything takes on a relative state because I'm thinking, I'm just here for a while. When the pandemic first started, one of the phrases that people gravitated towards was, this too shall pass, having a wider perspective. So one of the first teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam is, remember, we're here temporarily and work towards the end. And as it turns out, when we try to remember Krishna in our daily life, our life becomes happy. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Ananyas chintayantomam yejana paripasate tesham dab yuktanam yoga kshemam bahamyaham. To those who think of me in all their work, and they're dedicated to me in the way that they work, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Those who depend on Krishna, who think of Krishna, who pray to Krishna, they're not in anxiety because they know I'm not the controller. Another point from Stephen Covey, he said, there's a circle of influence that we have and it's very tiny. There's a very few things that we can actually do something about in this world. And then there's a huge, ever-increasing circle of our circle of concern. And once we go out of the small circle of our circle of influence into the circle of concern, we're in constant anxiety. So the Srimad Bhagavatam recommends work within your circle of influence. Remember what your purpose is and you'll feel satisfied, you'll feel happy. Not only that, you'll be effective in life. So the Srimad Bhagavatam tells us the truth from the very beginning, that we're here temporarily, and the ultimate goal of life is to remember Krishna. So this is called reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. And as far as service goes, let's just talk about that for a moment. There's many kinds of service, really good services that we can do for others, right? Shukadeva Goswami tells Parikshit Maharaj in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's one great service you can do. Out of all the good services, the great service is to help somebody come back to spiritual consciousness. Because as long as we're attached to the body, and I think that the life means to try to get comfortable in the material world, I'll never be happy. And even if I make somebody a little more comfortable, if I give somebody, like let's say a fish who jumps out of the water and is walking down the road. Have you ever seen this? Here in Toronto, you don't have that so much? <laughs> Maybe Vancouver. If we were to make the fish happy, what could we give the fish to make it happy outside its pond? No, say some other material things. Veronica? That's the ultimate solution. I want to hear a few ridiculous solutions. How about if we give the fish a hat? How about if we give the fish a car? A Tesla. How about if we give the fish a loan? Okay, what would you like to give the fish? A fire truck? A motorcycle. A motorcycle? Okay, we're going to give the fish a hat, a motorcycle, yes? A bungalow. Fish like bungalows. See, kids know how to answer these questions. <laughs> yes? Give them a house. A big house, though, here on, what is this street? Roxborough. Rock. Roxborough. Give the fish a house on Roxborough. These aren't houses, they're compounds. Is the fish happy? I don't know what that is. So the fish 
doesn't care for hats, doesn't care for Gasoloma, whatever that is, doesn't want a house on Roxbury or whatever that street that is, Roxborough. Fish wants to go, go ahead, your turn, Veronica, in the pond. We also want to go back in the pond. We only feel satisfied when we go back. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is that pond. And the way to revive recharge one's spiritual awareness is very simple. It's written in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It says, Srinvatam Swa Kata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hridyan Taksto Hibadrani Vidunoti Suritsatam. And that is just by listening to the stories in the Srimad Bhagavatam. They go into the ear and into the heart and the heart becomes purified of all the obstacles that keep us back from seeing reality and actually being happy. Now, I want you to check something really quick. Can you work with me for a diagnostic for a second? Okay, two people said yes. Everybody else, okay. I want you to just check and see if you still have two ears. Check. Check. Are they there? Okay. Now, just notice, you don't have to be demonstrative about it if you have a tongue. Notice, maybe bite on it a little bit. Do you have a tongue? Okay, three or four of you still do? All right. These are free. They're thrown in with the human body. They throw it in for free. Here, give you a new human body. I give you two free ears. And if you look at your ear in the mirror when you go home, you'll be surprised. Don't look too long because you think, I look like an alien. Because ears, they have all these convolutions. They're meant to catch sound and it goes inside. So the Bhagavatam's solution to life is very simple because Oakham's razor says the right answer is usually the simplest answer. So the simple answer the Srimad Bhagavatam gives for all the problems of life, including the D word, death. Sorry, it's a family show, hate to bring it up. The D word, which is what the Srimad Bhagavatam starts with, solved. How? Very simple process. Listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. If you listen to it, the sound goes in these specially designed ears thrown in for free with the human body. You don't even need somebody to read it to because you can do it yourself with your tongue. And when you do that, then your whole life transforms from the inside out. Your motive in life changes. Your awareness of the difference between your body and yourself changes. And most important of all, you become aware of Krishna because Krishna is there within the heart and he's the one who helps us. He is the one who helps us every single second just to be aware that there's sunshine that there's, that I'm in a body and I can move my body. It's all coming from His grace. So if we turn our attention to Krishna just by listening to the Bhagavatam, then the transformation automatically takes place in our life from the inside out. And everything turns to spirit from matter. So I recommend the Srimad Bhagavatam. My teacher is Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada lived in Vrindavan for about 11 years before he came to the West. And he wouldn't leave until he had an English translation that he trusted of the Srimad Bhagavatam. You know how he got one? Does anybody want to guess? How he got a, a trusted version of the Srimad Bhagavatam? Okay, we got a few ringers in here, already know the answer. Anybody who doesn't know the answer back there or didn't hear that? How did he get a trustworthy version of the Srimad Bhagavatam that he could share in New York City, San Francisco, Santa Fe, Montreal, and Toronto. Okay, I'd like somebody to give an answer, one person. Hey, wait a minute, you're a ringer. Yes, madam, you're smiling, you should say. What do you think he did? What did she say? He learned it himself and He wrote it himself. He made the translation. He was a scholar. He knew Bengali, he knew English, he knew Sanskrit, and he sat with the commentaries from the 
great acharyas who had written extensively. And then he translated in English and he gave commentary to the first canto. Later on, he completed the Bhagavatam all the way up to the 10th canto. His disciples, who he had trained painstakingly over many years, then took on the task themselves to finish the rest of it. So the Srimad Bhagavatam now is available in English. And it's something that is a treasure of India. There is a history in India that various outside influences have come to India and also taken much of the wealth of India, right? There's one thing they forgot to take. My spiritual master said this when he first went to London and the news reporters came up and said, why did you come here? And he said, all of you came to India and you took away all the wealth, stopped all the, the mills, surplanted them with others, took away jewels, they're still in the British Museum. You forgot something. You forgot to take the real wealth. That's the spiritual knowledge of India. And I've brought that to add to your collection. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is so powerful that we have a program where now distributing it all over the world in languages like Mandarin, Spanish, Zulu. We have French, German, Czech, Arabic. It's amazing that it's going out all over the world. And in the last few years, in the last few years, we've placed Srimad Bhagavatam in many of the small villages in India that are being affected by many different ideologies. And you know what happens? As soon as the Srimad Bhagavatam goes into the, the learning hall in the small villages, everyone rallies around the Bhagavatam and the entire village becomes vibrant with spiritual knowledge. So I'm advocating for Srimad Bhagavatam. It is the proven method, according to the great Acharyas, for surcharging one's spiritual life. And you can live in a house, you can live in an apartment, you can live in a van, you can live in the forest. But if you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll be happy from inside out and everything in your life will become adjusted. Thank you very much. What? I can't hear you. What do you say? Hare Krishna. So as Vaisheshika My wife said, you just have to have it in your house. I think I left that part out. So everyone take a Srimad Bhagavatam and put it in your house. Now, people nowadays, they get a house, and if there's two rooms, then they have two televisions. If there's three rooms, they have three televisions. So if you have a house with more than one room, get one, more than one set of Srimad Bhagavatams. Just a suggestion. It's an idea. Hare Krishna. As Vaisheshi Prabhu said, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the perfect solution to all of our life's problems. And by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, by allowing Srimad Bhagavatam's words to enter our ears and through our ears into our heart, we can transform our life and get free from all the problems. So. This year, well, for the last few years, we've had a global campaign where there's been a focus to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam, to share Srimad Bhagavatam. Because there is no dearth of wealth in the world, but there's dearth of people who have the right type of knowledge and who know how to use their resources to, to actually help the world. And Srimad Bhagavatam gives us the right solutions of where to use our resources and where to use our energy. So this campaign is called the Bhadra Campaign. And the goal of the Bhadra campaign is to take Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world in every house, every respectable house. This year, the goal for Srimad Bhagavatam distribution all over the world is at least 55,000 sets. <laughs> and Toronto, because we're a part of this big uh, world team, 
has taken a goal of at least 299 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. We have sets in many different languages, like Prabhu said, English, Hindi, Tamil, Gujarati, Russian, Spanish, Sp French, thank you, and, and many other languages where we have um, international collaborations with. Please take a Srimad Bhagavatam set if you don't have one. We have Vaisheshika Prabhu here today. It's a very rare occasion. It only happens once in a year these days. So we're very fortunate that Prabhu has come from, uh, from, uh, from his really busy schedule to be here during this time. It's also a, an Ekadashi day, Ekadashi of the Shukla Paksha. So it's a very, very auspicious day to do any spiritual activity. So please don't hold back. If you don't have a Srimad Bhagavatam set, get it today. In addition to all these special things, there is a benediction in the Bhagavatam itself that anybody who distributes, who gives a Srimad Bhagavatam set on the day of Bhadra Purnima, which is the Purnima of the next month, the month of Bhadra, is guaranteed a ticket of Goloka, the spiritual world. And in the spiritual world, there are no problems. So we're all hankering for this place where we can be happy and free from stress and really just be and enjoy ourselves. And the spiritual world and the Srimad Bhagavatam has that solution. So if you don't have a Srimad Bhagavatam set, today is the day. And Vaisheshika Prabhu will um, be able to sign and yeah, give... I'm not moving. I'm going to stay right here. We'll give his special blessings and empowerment to you so you can grow in your spiritual life. For those of you who may already have the Srimad Bhagavatam set, the best gift is the gift of knowledge. So it is also a very glorious day to do dan. And the best dan, vidya danam param danam. So please give the gift of knowledge and not just any knowledge, the perfect knowledge, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Like Vaisheshika Prabhu said, we have campaigns all over the world. The Srimad Bhagavatam sets being sponsored in villages through Gram Vidya Dan to help restore and preserve that which actually belongs there, but is being washed by all the other ideologies. So you can sponsor a set to actually help in a village. Devotees will go there and share the knowledge and help people read the Srimad Bhagavatam sets. You can also send sets to Latin America where there's lots of people who want to read Srimad Bhagavatam but don't have the means to get one set. No, they can't afford it. They can't That's afford true. it. So please, please take this opportunity and give this gift in charity of the Srimad Bhagavatam. You will benefit because you will get spiritual credits. You will get a ticket to go back to Godhead and they will benefit because they will get the spiritual knowledge. We have the Srimad Bhagavatam set is available for a donation of $351. We have monthly installment plans that will help you get set up and you will get so much spiritual benefit by taking the Srimad Bhagavatam set. So please, please, please don't hold back and um, give Srimad Bhagavatam a chance and give yourself a chance by taking the spiritual knowledge in your life. 351 Canadian. So if you would like, during, uh, soon the Prashadam time is going to start. And during that time, Prabhu will be here. We have our teams ready to um, get the sets to you. We also have these wristbands which to remind you of the Bhadra Purnima campaign. So you can, you're welcome to take those as well. We can deliver in Bangladesh. We can deliver sets in India. We can deliver sets in UK, New Zealand. And recently, with great pride, we can also deliver sets in Antarctica. We made a documentary about it. The Bhagavatams made it to Antarctica. It's not easy. But well, just finished a documentary film about how we did that. And it's, it's in its final draft, ready to come out. I'm hopeful that you'll all have it by next week so you can look at it. Just and one I last bit of information. If you sponsor a set to be sent to the Gram Vidya Dan project, it's only $251 Canadian, and you get a tax receipt as well. And the donation will be made in your name, and you will get to see which village the set has gone to. So thank you. I'll be here all night. I'm not going to move. I'm going to be right here. If you want a Srimad Bhagavatam set, come up. I'll personally carry it to your car. Or if you're a long way away, I'll go home with you. I'll put it on your shelf. Whatever you want, I'll, I'm here dedicated to you, not moving. Please come see me. Hare Krishna. Pardon me. Yes. Come into Ryan's house first. It's going to take a Bhagavatam set for every 
room in the house, right? <laughs> Let's show a bigger round of appreciation Thank for Vice Chika Prabhu and Mother Nirakula for being here with us. As Prabhu mentioned, if any of you are interested in getting a Srimad Bhagavatam set for yourself or if you want to gift it to your friend or relatives, please feel free to come forward. We'll be happy to have a conversation with you and help you out in distributing a Bhagavatam set. So thank you all. Before we serve Prashadam, we have a couple of quick announcements. In the next 10 days, we have two festivities. On the August 30th, which is a Wednesday, we will be celebrating Balram Jayanti, the appearance day of Sri Balram. We'll be having festivities start from 6 p.m. It's a weekday, so please do come by after work, or if you're working from home, even better, try to join us for the entire program from 6 p.m. onwards to about 8.30 p.m. And on the September 6th, we'll be celebrating Sri Krishna Janmashtami, the biggest salvation in temple. There will be darshan throughout the day, but we will be having special programs starting from 6 p.m. And there will be a special midnight darshan at about 12 a.m. on the occasion of Sri Krishna Janmashtami. And um, yes, yes. So the, the next day after uh, Sri Krishna Janmashtami, that is the 7th of September, we will be having Srila Prabhupada's Vyas Puja. And on that note, I do have um, a, a template for writing Vyas Puja. We'll be uh, leaving these uh, notes in the front, in the front desk. If anyone would like to uh, make their offering to be included in our year, yearly book of uh, Srila Prabhupada's Vyas Puja. Please feel free to come by. We encourage everyone uh, to make your heartfelt offering for Srila Prabhupada on this important occasion. And we will be handing out these um, sheets of paper for you to write offering. And uh, on the note of festivities, we are looking for volunteers to help out in these two days of festivities. Uh, if you are interested, please feel free to come by the front desk. There's a devotee named Uttamananda Prabhu uh, who will be happy to take your name. We need help throughout the day on uh, the occasion of Janmashtami. We also would like to encourage you all to come by to have a look at this wonderful book called Our Family Business, which is a book written by His Grace by Shishika Prabhu. If you are inspired by what you heard today, if you'd like to learn more about the art of book distribution, this is the book to have and uh, be inspired to learn more on this art of uh, sharing this knowledge with everyone. Once again, Prabhu would be happy to sign this book as well as a copy or uh, rather a set of Srimad Bhagavatam. So please feel free to come by. Don't feel shy. We'll be here for however long it takes if for all of you to take a I'm set. Not, I'm not moving. Yes, Prabhu is going to be here. And let's give a bigger round of appreciation for Prabhu, Mataji, and the Sankirtan team. Can we be louder, everyone? Thank you. And let's chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra once for Prabhu and Mataji for being here on this wonderful occasion to celebrate this weekend. So one, two, three, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Maybe once more louder. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you. Thank you so much once again. Anybody would like to come front to get a get your set of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the time. Feel free to come by and we'll be happy to serve you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Everything's in. Everything's in. Thank you.